Welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com. Welcome to those who access the podcast through the Be Young Ministry YouTube channel. Today we continue in the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 18 through 24, which reads, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not, will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Again, that's John chapter 14, verses 18 through 24. The God of the Bible is the Father of all mankind. However, in the garden, mankind became orphaned when we chose to ignore God's definition of things. We, in essence, ran away from home only to discover we unknowingly locked the door for re-entry. And we can't unlock this door. In Psalm 68 and verse 5, we learn of God as the father of the fatherless and protector of widows. We can only be children of the Father through believing in His Son and receiving His free gift of forgiveness procured through His death on the cross. In John 14, 18, we read, The one whom the disciples had learned to love and trust promised not to leave them as orphans. He explains that He would return to them after His death and send the Holy Spirit to live in each of them. Of course, as recorded at the end of the Gospels and in the book of Acts, the Lord Jesus returned to them after his resurrection. And on that day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came to live in those who had believed on the Lord Jesus. With that, the primary work of the Holy Spirit is to make the Lord Jesus real, more real to the believer. The mark of the Spirit-filled life is an ever-deepening consciousness of the reality of Jesus Christ. This is the primary work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. In verse 19 of our text, we read, Before long the uh, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. The Lord Jesus is referring to his post-resurrection appearances. In a 40-day period after his death and resurrection, the Lord Jesus appeared to those who had left all to follow him. In addition, the Holy Spirit enables the believer to see the Lord Jesus more deeply. The Holy Spirit makes the Lord Jesus more real to the believer. More than that, the Lord Jesus continues Because I live, you also will live. The Greek word used here for live is zoe, which means eternal life. This is the type of life which gives us God's perspective on life. The Holy Spirit indwells the believer permanently. While the believer still sins and grieves the Spirit, the Spirit will never leave the believer. In verse 20, we read these four words. You are in me. This is our first experience when we come to Christ. It is the Holy Spirit who makes us alive to God and his culture. We, now, are children of God. We have been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Notice the last four words. In verse 20, I am in you. The Christian life is not about what we can do for God. No, 
It is about what he does for us, in us, and through us. It is a personal relationship with God whereby we are getting to know his heart of love for us and others. And as we get to know him, we will naturally want others to know him. This is his desire, not only for us, but also for others. <clears throat> obedience is not too difficult for those who know his love. The key to obedience is not the demands of the law. The key to obedience is our response to his love. According to 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, our love for God is our response to his love for us. We love him because he loved us first. As a result, having experienced his love for us, we teach people of his love for mankind. We show them how much he has already loved us and them, and obedience is the natural response of the impacted human heart. Note that the Lord Jesus says in verse 21, Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. As we grow in our understanding of his love for us, a greater intimacy ensues. Note the word show, which is ephanizo in the Greek. This is one of ten times in the New Testament that this word is used. At its essence is this. The more vulnerable we are with God, the more vulnerable he becomes with us. At this point, Judas, not Judas Iscariot, enters into the conversation in verse 22. This Judas is not the Judas Iscariot who betrayed the Lord Jesus. He is another disciple whose name was Judas. He asks, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? The opposite of ignorance is not knowledge. No, the opposite of ignorance is obedience. Responding to the revelation of himself he has given us. It is not merely filling our heads with knowledge and facts. It is becoming more and more vulnerable and therefore intimate with God. Since the world does not know the Lord Jesus and does not obey him, they will not know intimacy with God. But since we know him, we obey him. And as a result, we know more intimacy. We're not earning intimacy with God, but we're going down, down the pathway that renders such intimacy. In verses 23 and 24, we learn that the Lord Jesus and his Father's word are synonymous. When we love his word, we love him, and vice versa. The result is a continuing, familiar comfort in his presence. Also, he will enjoy a continuing, familiar comfort in our presence. We will be at home with him, and he will be at home with us. When we come to Christ, God not only forgives us, he also adopts us. Through a dramatic series of events, we go from condemned orphans with no hope to adopted children with no fear. The orphans have returned home and are growing, growing familiar with their father. My friends, I trust this podcast is of help to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at theyoungministry at gmail. Com. Hey, have a great day.